Um, what do you think? The first movie I ever saw her in, first time I ever saw Scarlett Johansson. What do you think of Ghost World? I love Ghost World. That's a great movie. Yeah, it's really do, funny. Do you think that movie like that guy forgotten? in the store? I ne yeah, I never hear people talk about it anymore. I mean, it was yeah, maybe, maybe I don't know. I guess it, I know. Don't get me wrong. I, I it was think about it every like, once in a while. I like it. It was never like a blockbuster film. Like it never was no. one of those things where no, it was like, an it indie was, cult you know, movie, right? But but all the little scenesters to... and hipsters love it. Well, they yeah, but I I don't know. I feel like they forgot about it too. It's like Six String Samurai. When the movie Six String Samurai came out in 1998, everybody was talking about that movie. Like all the film geeks, it was like being compared to the Evil Dead. It was being compared to everyone's like this is like the new Evil Dead. And within like two, three years, everyone's I never even heard about of it. that, Joe. Six String Samurai? I never saw Six that. Six String Samurai. Oh, you would love it, man. All right. You I'm would you would love that. it. Is it it's anime? A, no. No, I'm not no. an anime guy. Uh it's it's, a, it's yeah. got an evil dead two kind of vibe, but it's not a horror movie. Uh okay. it's a post apocalyptic film where um there the king of rock and roll has died, and uh there's been an apocalypse, the king of rock and roll has died, and buddy. Who, who looks very, run, he looks much like um, uh, uh, Buddy Holly. He he's on his way to Las Vegas to be the new king, mm -hmm. but death is also on his way. So it, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, it's, I love, it's dude. There is an awesome, awesome sub sub genre of weirdo post apocalyptic movies, and I'm all about that. There's this 1985 movie. Have you heard of Radioactive Dreams? I haven't. Okay, that's with the guy um, from American Ninja in this movie, Radioactive Dreams. It's about these two brothers that are in like this fallout shelter during like a nuclear wa like war. Some shit happens, and they're in this fallout shelter with nothing but noir like uh, books, like noir books, like detective novels and shit. So they grew up wanting to be detectives. They dress like detectives, and like when they're grown up, they want to go solve cases. So they leave the the shelter. To go like get into these crazy adventures, and it actually has like some pretty good uh like action, uh, you know, martial arts from the American Ninja guy. It's not bad. It's pretty. It's a pretty weird movie. There's another one with Jason Momoa called The Bad Batch, which is about this girl that gets like tossed out of society into like this almost like it. It's like the post-apocalyptic mix with Burning Man is the only way to describe it, and she gets her arm and leg cut off. And eaten by Jason Momoa, and she's uh, like she wants revenge. But it's a very weirdo movie. What's awesome about that movie is that throughout the movie, there's crazy celebrity cameos, like crazy. Keanu Reeves shows up, Jim Carrey shows up in like in the most bizarre roles. Jim Carrey's unrecognizable in this uh, apocalypse. It's awesome. The Bad Batch. So those are my two weirdo post-apocalyptic recommendations: The Bad Batch and uh, Radioactive Dreams. Have you ever seen? I'll give you another one. Uh, have you ever seen a boy and his dog? No, I hear I hear about that, and it's like like the first one, right? To have that style, like that Mad Max style, seventy five. Yeah, yeah, and the dog talks, uh, and it's Don Johnson. Don, Don Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, I heard about it. I've heard about it. I've heard about it a lot. I hear about it all the time. I have that one on Blu Ray. I haven't. Watched I haven't it in seen a while. it yet. I gotta. I gotta pop that one. Is off it good? Again. Does it have a car chase? I'll watch if it has a car chase. I don't chase. remember if there was a car chase. It's been a All long time. All those 70s movies had great car chases. It blew me away, though. It was one of those things I heard the premise, and I'm like, oh, this sounds dumb. And then one night it was on, like, um, AMC. or Yeah, I think it was AMC. And I'm like, oh, AMC's showing a boy and his dog. Let me watch it. And I watched it and went and ordered the Blu-ray. I'm like, yo, no, I like that. I'm gonna check out the Sing String Samurai. They got a they got a release from Vinegar Syndrome. Yeah, I, I have it. Um, in Look fact, yeah, this looks like the most post Tarantino awesome. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, this was a 1998 film, and for years I said Never there heard are two it. movies. I said there's two movies in my DVD collection that desperately need an upgrade because mm -hmm. they were released on Pillar Box. Well, they got non it non anamorphic widescreen. And it was Six String Samurai and mm -hmm. Todd Salance's Happiness. Happiness. Both 1990 films. Then we got Six String Samurai from Vinegar Syndrome. And I was like, dude, we're never going to get um, Happiness. And yeah, it's we now coming in yeah. uh, September. So, You know what probably took this movie's uh, all the clout was Boondock Saints. Didn't it come around, around the same time? And it was a similar like cult hit. 
Yeah, I mean, th this is definitely more more culty and quirky because you know, yeah, I don't know. Th this has like more of a. I, I I keep saying Evil Dead. It's got an Evil Dead vibe, but when I say Evil Dead vibe, it's not a horror movie. That's not what I'm talking about. Like I'm talking about yeah. like. Do you ever know. see um El Mariachi, the, oh, the yeah. Robert Rodriguez one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it like that? Because that felt like it has those Evil Dead camera moves sort, and stuff. Sort of, but it, it's weirder because it's in this, which I like. like it's in this um, I love fantasy Mariachi. world, this, this this unreal world where, I mean, death is the villain in this movie. It's literally Based. the Grim Reaper, and he's got a Sounds guitar. like a Suda 5-1 video game. I don't yeah, think you'll it, get that reference, Joe. Only true nerds. If RJ's here, he'd get it. Yeah, this feels like a Suda 5-1 game. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch this. Uh, and Reggie says, Six String Samurai has a nice 4K uh, from Vinegar Syndrome. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. First movie I saw her in was Home Alone 3. Wait, Scarlett Johansson was in Home Alone 3? But I didn't know she, who she why was the, at the time. Why the F were you seeing Home Alone? Cheeseman, you see... Yeah, whatever. I don't... I only remember uh, Scarlett from uh, Match thanks Point. For, Woody, Woody Allen's Match Point, which I think is a masterpiece. That's the first for, movie I remember seeing her in. And thanks then I for saw stopping Ghost by, Butts. Later. later, Butts. Um, Ghost World was the first I saw her in, and then the, um, the, the Coen Brothers movie was the second. Um, the man who brother. man who wasn't there. Oh, the man who wasn't. I never saw that one. I have. I blind bought I, it. I have the blue. I love the Coen Brothers, and I gotta say, I haven't seen the man who wasn't there since it was in the theater. I only saw it one time in the theater. You might need to see it again. Yeah, they're I mean, that good. Yeah, they are. I'm. Mean, you know what the okay, my most underrated Coen Brothers movie. I as one of my serious favorites. man. A serious man. I knew it. Do I not? Do I not know people? I know movies, bro. What What do you think of a serious man? I love a serious yeah, yeah. I love I love all the Coen brothers. But I haven't seen Lady Killers. Um, I haven't seen uh, The Man That Wasn't There, but I love uh, Blood Simple. It's probably my favorite to this day. I love Blood Simple. Raising Arizona is amazing. I cried at the end. I loved it. I saw that way late. In my, I probably saw that like uh, in my early 30s. Uh, I love that movie. Um, after that, uh, Miller's Crossing. Love Miller's Crossing. Love Miller's Crossing. I think that's my favorite, like, old-timey gangsters movie. Shout out Sam Raimi's in it. He gets shot. Um, what's after Miller's Crossing? What'd they do? What'd they do? Barton uh, Fink? The, no, no. Um, Barton Fink. Love. Oh, my God. I think Barton Fink's a masterpiece. Man, that might be my favorite of theirs. I don't know. Okay. Uh, after that, the Huts. 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 Huts the proxy. Pro that, love that movie. Love that movie. Love the, it's genius. I think the style, all that. Man, Coen Brothers were like five. That's when I think a lot of filmmakers were kind of inspired with like interior filmmaking of of uh, Tim Burton. He kind of brought that back. He kind of I brought think... back that studio. Use it if you're inside a studio. Why are you making it look like a real forest? Like go nuts. And I think uh, a lot of um, filmmakers were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Spielberg did Hook, and then Coen Brothers did that one, where it's like the the freaking set designs were just oof, stylized, highly stylized. Well, I feel like everyone went nuts for them after um after uh, uh, I love what do you call it? Movies. Um oh the, the, the one with George Clooney. Um uh, Oh Brother Where Art Thou. Oh Brother, oh, brother Where Art Thou. What and no and people, people were nuts about, no Fargo. Fargo was the one that well, yeah, no, but, like. but but I feel like Big Lebowski took oh, them to I a different Big level. Lebowski. Like because yeah. yeah. That's film the funniest geek, movie. Yeah, film geeks liked them, but like I feel like the, that was the one where suddenly everybody liked the the yeah. Coen Brothers. Like it's but, also Kevin Smith fans liking him now. Right, right. Now, yeah. But then they got to a point where suddenly their movies like fell off. Not that they weren't good, but the public just stopped embracing them. And I think that was um, your Lady Killers. That was um, the uh, Burn After there, Reading. And, I love uh, Burn After Reading. I mean, me too. I, I think it's hilarious. Intolerable cruelty. Intolerable cruelty, Double cruelty. is one. Wow, with you, Bruce. Nobody talks about that one. I like that one a lot. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that one. I know it has Bruce Campbell in it. Shout out Bruce Campbell. Oh, oh yeah, he's a dentist in it, isn't he? I forgot. I thought he was okay. a cowboy. I could be wrong. Was he, I think he's he's on a TV screen though. Like I mean, he's not actually. Yeah. But yeah, no. It's. What did they do after that? When they, they came back with No Country. But what are they doing before that? A little bit. They had to have done stuff before that. No, it, because it was no country was like their huge, like, holy crap. Yeah. And then after that, literally the year after that was Burn After Reading. And then after that was Serious Man. 
What they do after that? Nobody went and saw. Serious Man was uh, didn't even get a wide release. That was only in like the art house theaters. Yeah, but, but there was oh, another movie. A single dance man. here, dance here. High from work just got on. Talking Cullen Brothers favorites, Barton Fink and No Country are my top. Uh, I love those two. Uh, no Country is absolutely a masterpiece. Absolutely, oh, like yeah. like they have so many like they have so many masterpieces. Like I can't even. I probably sh it was very very rude of me to say Blood Simple is my favorite because like I think of No Country of like that's an amazing movie too, and Barton Fink's amazing. Uh, Lisa says they. Lisa's in Rhode Island, by the way. She says. Uh, the Fairley Brothers have shot so much in her area. What's our favorite Fairley Brothers movie? Uh, Dumb and Dumber, okay. easy. Okay, that, you you you're the one who likes to pick out what everyone's favorites are. What's my favorite Fairley Brothers movie? Oh, man, I kind of want to say me myself and Irene. You seem like a me myself Irene guy, but I do, I do enjoy that. But no, it's not no. My favorite. Okay, okay, what is it? Kingpin. A Kingpin. Damn, I should have known that one. <laughs> I yeah. love Kingpin. Yeah. Kingpin's great. Kingpin's great, especially how their hair looks in the final bout. Like, oh my god, I love it. Uh, Bill Murray, the Bill Murray's comb over. Yeah, that out. that was fantastic. Like, it got more stressful. Their comb over was wild. I wish someone would steal that for another movie. I was just <laughs> quoting Kingpin uh, the other day. We were we were um, we. Were, I had to take my daughters to see a bullfight. Or not a bullfight. Oh um, God, I, I know where this uh, is going. I, no, I, I we don't have a, a cow. We have a bull. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it was a uh, it was a rodeo. They wanted to go to a rodeo, and there was yeah. a, a bull bull riding, and uh, the the bull. And I just was like, "Good morning, took the liberty of milking your cow. We don't oh, have no. a cow. We have a Got bull." A bull. <laughs> Oh boy! I, I, I what's her name? Um, uh, Robert Shea's sister, um, Lynn Shea. Lynn Shea is the <laughs> landlord. When she says to, um, she's to like, and she also had a resurgence with those Insidious films, and I started seeing her in all these horror films. When when, <laughs> right, Woody, when Woody Harrelson uh, had to have sex with her because he didn't have the money for the rent, <sighs> yeah. and you just see him throwing up in the toilet, and she yeah. goes. What is it about great sex that makes me have to crap? <laughs> great line. Yeah, yo, Woody Harrelson had a streak too where he was in some hilarious movies. There's this movie that's like it's okay. It's okay. It's not the best. Uh Ed TV. Have you seen Ed TV? But Woody Harrelson is absolutely hilarious because he gets like uh Matthew McConaughey's character gets like a reality show, gets big off of it, and like then he runs off. Uh, to fall falls in love with a girl, and then the brother is left with nothing. So he writes a book called "My Brother Pissed on Me," <laughs> and it just shows Woody Harrelson's, Woody Harrelson's face. But I always thought that was the most hilarious book title ever, outside of Boner uh, with uh, Past Lives later on. But "My Brother Pissed on Me" was the name of his book. My brother pissed on me. <laughs> Hang on a second, I'm gonna try and. Uh, um... There's something about Mary is great, Cheeseman. I think Dumb and Dumber is just. I love Dumb and Dumber. I love you know why? Because it kind of turns into a thriller at the end. They even have like that thriller music. You know, they're taking things serious. That's what I like. The bad guys kind of took it serious. And that's what was amazing seeing those two bad guys that well, that one bad guy get completely annoyed with them. My friend I, don't know, I really like Dumb and Dumber. I think it's very well done. My friend Tim is an actor, and he was actually in Ed TV. Um trying to remember what part he played but he was in um no minor role but um he was also in rocky uh rocky six <laughs> i love that's the only one i've seen yeah. i lied because i said i never saw a rocky movie and i forgot that i had seen rocky six and actually enjoyed rocky six what do you mean and now yeah. i'm stuck having to see all the rocky so movies that's all i get you gotta see. You haven't seen Rocky. Oh, Prop, you haven't seen Rocky. How can you oh, say you like yeah. movies you haven't seen? They, people just find that one movie you haven't seen. They're just like that. Oh, you don't. You how can you say you like movies if you haven't yeah. seen that one? Oh wait, yeah, I'm minute. looking at you, Cheeseman. I think I was mistaken. I don't think he was on in the movie Ed TV. I think show. he. I think he was on the TV show Ed. <laughs> there was and a TV, was TV show. TV. Yeah. yeah, there was he a TV was show Ed that was on TV. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was around the same time, um, around the, the year 2000. I was actually on for four years, uh, Ed. Um, but yeah, he was on a few episodes of Ed. Uh, Six I string, <laughs> damn it, Does this have its own like theme song? 
that all the, the music the was title? done. All the music was done by a Russian rockabilly band called the Red Elvises. So they sing songs like, why, is, why don't you like does, to boogie boogie? Did this boogie? director ever do anything else? Uh, yes, he directed The Crow 4 Wicked Prayer that went right direct to video. Oh, my God. Lance, the one with Lance Edward Mun Furlong? Yes, Lance Mungia uh, is the director. And Kristen, yeah. Kristen Dunst? Uh-huh. I was going to say Kristen Stewart, but it's not Kristen Stewart. Yes, Kristen here Dunst. he is. Lance Mungia. It's Melancholia Dunst. He uh, oh my god, they killed me. He uh, co-wrote and directed Crow Wicked Prayer, Six String Samurai. Um, yeah, so he pretty much did one good movie, <laughs> but but you know, hey, I haven't seen Wicked Prayer more than I've done. Know. So it, you know, it's oh not it's not good. <laughs> You've seen all the crows. I saw the Crow Wicked Prayer. Because it was from the director of Six String Samurai. So I'm like, oh, I got to check that out. Oh, my God. Cheeseman, you idiot. How did you follow the story in Rocky Six without seeing the other five? Dude, I understand what happens in Rocky. I, I get the gist of it. I understand Rocky. I get it. He trains. He loses. But it's really about winning or something. Whatever. Wow, Anthony. I, I actually forgot they directed the remake of True Grit. Yeah, that's I, for I that forgot all about awesome True too. Grit. That's that was the movie awesome, that too. introduced the world to Haley Steinfeld. Right? She's the best in Hawkeye. Uh, haters, haters are in shambles because they can't handle that Hawkeye was so good. You, you sent me a couple uh, videos for the Childish Gambino. Oh yeah, that's a trailer that looked interesting. I like the sound design. Oh my God. Don't oh, I don't do know. I, I don't know if we can share trailers without. Probably not. Yeah. Getting shut down. Uh, Okay. Probably not. Yeah, I think we're good. Hey, we made it an hour. I uh, else. let me see if I can. I, if I, I might have something that I could send you. Give me a second here. It used to be up. I saw Lethal Weapon before without seeing the other three, but that's different. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Here it is. Here it is. Jeez, I Jeez, is just, just absolutely driving me up the wall. Guess Jesus what I am really trying me today? What? Go guess ahead. what I am putting in the private chat? Uh oh, I am putting in. You know what? I'll even put it in the main chat. Let's send it to everybody. I'm uh -oh. sending you a link to this to the movie Six String Samurai on YouTube. Uh oh, put up by the owners of the yeah. film, Palm Films. So this yeah, isn't even illegal. They put it up on YouTube for all to see. And if you want to watch it, here it is in 1080 at least. What's that? Is it in 1080? Uh, I think it is. So, yeah, th there's the link. If you want to click that, you can watch Six String Samurai right here on YouTube. For a while, that YouTube link was the best way to watch the movie. Looks good. Because the, the DVD was crap. 